And our very special guest is, uh, is Peter Higgs, uh, of course, of the, the famous particle. And the great triumph of, uh, of CERN establishing that your theorem about uh, the particle that uh, is crucial when binding the universe together looks like it's been substantiated. So were you aware, uh, Peter, you must have been, that, that CERN were conducting the experiments and how did they communicate their findings to you? Oh, well, the process has been going on for, for years and years. A hunt for this particle amongst experimentalists began in the mid-70s when so much else of what's called a standard model was being verified and there was this uh, missing piece of it which was going to be difficult and it went into the uh, planning of the previous machine at CERN which was called LEP which was electrons on positrons in the same tunnel and then it, it was part of the program for the present machine which was first thought of around 1980 and it takes a very long time to build these things so that's why the the whole process has taken most of 50 years uh, so w when it you know when they got to a machine which would really get to the right energy to produce it which w was the LHC uh, it's been em emerging gradually over the, the past year and a half. The, the, they had hints of it in the summer of 2011. And well, was it reported amid great excitement and then yes, they, they tried I, to calm it down again? Curiously enough, uh, although mostly I, I hear of what's going on at the CERN through my colleagues out at King's Buildings who, who are involved in one this, of the... This University of Edinburgh. Edinburgh, yeah. Edinburgh University has a, a group of people on the Atlas detector at, ah. at CERN and so does Glasgow. And usually I hear about what's going on at CERN through them. On this occasion, I had a phone call from a neighbour, uh, the wife of a retired High Court judge, uh, John Murray, uh -huh. uh, and she said, Bill says something interesting is going to be announced at the conference in Grenoble next week. Yeah. Bill was their son, and he has the title, job title, coordinator of the Higgs search on Atlas. <laughs> so I got the pre preview, you got the preview through my neighbour. So, so how did they communicate the, the findings to you? Did, did they email you saying, Eureka? From time to time I got, got um, messages from Rolf Hoyer, the DG of CERN, yeah. saying, uh, we're not there yet, it's, it's not going to be a discovery claim, but at the next conference we're going to announce further progress. You know, better evidence statistically. And how confident were you, Peter, through the years uh, about the, I suppose you'd call it the empirical uh, establishing of your, uh, of your theory? How, how confident were you that, uh, that one day they would get to the stage of, well, of having enough uh, proof for certification? At, at the beginning, it, <coughs> it wasn't clear because it wasn't a, a theory with a, with a specific home in particle physics. It was a way of a way of doing things which was which was fairly new, but we, but the people who did it in '64 uh, tried to do the wrong things with it, and it wasn't until 1967 that somebody else found the right place for it in in in, in particle physics. And after that, it became a real theory, and the question was how long would it take to discover this? So, one of your seminal papers what, that postulated this, uh, you, you you were. You should have been up in the, the West Highlands, uh, bathing in the sunshine, but, <laughs> I, I, but I understand a camping trip went wrong and you returned to your labours at Edinburgh University. Is that story true? Yes, that's, that, that, that's, that's r roughly, roughly true. I, I'd written one short paper which, which was certain, sim simply uh, uh, demolishing a, a theorem which people thought they'd proved, which said something well, that was not, just not possible. And uh, then I turned to you know what was now possible, which involved putting together a kind of the kind of theory which a group of us were working working in, together with um, essentially Maxwell type of field fields, and that that was what worked. And in between the first paper and the second, I had this uh, abortive camping trip in the West Highlands, and came back having decided what I wanted to write and wrote it down and then it got rejected, and I, I didn't mention the 
so-called Higgs boson until I revised it, having realized that the people at uh, CERN who were doing the refer refereeing of the first version didn't know what, what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, initially, uh, way back then, CERN were very unconvinced by the uh, idea, were they not? They, were, <laughs> they didn't re recognize it as it, part it was, of... It uh, was a very unfashionable way of doing things in many respects. My colleagues thought I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that must be an element of satisfaction then, and where you are now. Very much so, yes. <laughs> Have you come across the, uh, a book written many years ago by um, a physicist come philosopher called Thomas Kuhn, who wrote about revolution, scientific revolutions. He distinguishes between what's called what he calls normal science, which is the kind of thing you do when when everything is 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 going smoothly and you're just working out applications of an existing theory and that sort of thing, and scientific revolutions when the old way of doing things is overturned in terms of something new. Well, I call myself a scientific counter-revolutionary because the things I was involved in, uh, in uh, were essentially reinstating uh, ideas which involved um, things like you know Maxwell fields and so on, which had previously been rejected as, as science, irrelevant. So, uh, so I'm, a, I'm a scientific counter-revolutionary. Excellent stuff. <laughs> so, so not just a revisionist, a counter-revisionist. <laughs> Excellent. The, well, anyway, Peter, we, we were so delighted that you were in Scotland when you were uh, uh, pr promulgating this theory and uh, we are especially delighted that you, well, you're, you're I, here with us to, to see I, the theory being established. I, I'm, I'm delighted that I, that I moved to Scotland many years ago. Uh, in fact, my, my mother's ancestors were Scottish. They, they originated in Thurso on the and, north coast. And what, which clan or family were they? they, they, they their name was Coggill, which is, I think, of um, probably Viking origin. <laughs> well, that, these are all good connections. I, anyway. I, was, I was looking for the physics gene. <laughs> That's something else to look no, for. No, in, in, at the, le at the um, level of my, my grandfather, maternal grandfather, uh, they were medics. Uh, the, there were two brothers. Uh, my great uncle uh, worked with the Simpson, who, who, after whom the Simpson Memorial Pavilion in, in Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, in other words, obstetrics. Yeah, he, and he, he was quite a distinguished uh, medic who hoped to succeed Simpson when Simpson died, uh -huh. but the job went to Simpson's nephew. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't allow that in academic no, no. appointments now, so <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we, we were so delighted that you, you put your name to the school prize, but I understand, Peter, that you, didn't, you told me you didn't win a physics prize yourself until you clocked up half a century and more. I find this unlikely. Well, it was just that the sort of physics that was taught in secondary school in those days was rather uninteresting, and I was much more interested in chemistry, and uh, my interest in chemistry led to interest in structure of matter at a, at a deeper level. That's, that's the story. Well, I, I, I remember the textbook when I was at school was called Physics is Fun. Mm. But I've got to tell you, Peter, if they'd been postulating the Higgs particle, mm. I would have found it much more enjoyable. <laughs> Anyway, many thanks for setting up the prize with my name on it. Thank you, sir.